Well, the man at the center of the Manti Teo fake girlfriend hoax, Renaya Tuyasasopo, has now told his side of the story in an interview with Dr. Phil McGraw, telling him that he pretended to be Teo's online girlfriend for years, creating her out of thin air after hijacking the, the identity of a former high school classmate, Diane O'Meara. She became the face of the fictional Lene Kikua, though she had no idea until a couple of weeks ago. Well, in his first interview since the story broke, Tuyasasopo told Dr. Phil that he acted alone and ended up falling in love with Manti Teo, the Notre Dame star linebacker. Listen. Were you in love with him? I mean, yeah. If, if, if I had pretty much had this escape of Lene from everything else and this was where, you know, my heart had pretty much invested not just time, but all of my energy went into this. Um, as twisted and as confusing as it may be, um, yeah, I mean, I cared for this person. I grew feelings, I grew emotions that um, I, I sooner or later I couldn't control anymore. Are you gay? Honestly, if you look at this situation and look at everything that I've been through in this, of course, yeah, you say, I would say, yeah, I am gay. But honestly, I'm, I'm so confused. I'm so lost, and I'm just finding me in this whole experience. But what you know is that you did have romantic feelings for another man. Yes. Tuyasa Sopo told Dr. Phil that the hoax was an escape for him from a painful secret he'd hidden for years. The secret was, they said, that starting the age of 12, he was repeatedly molested and raped by someone close to his family. Now, you may wonder why anyone should believe a guy who's already proved he's a liar by engineering the hoax in the first place. Dr. Phil asked Tuyasa Sopo to prove that it really was his voice on the voicemails that Teo received allegedly from his girlfriend. Tuyasa Sopo agreed to read the voicemails behind a privacy screen. He said he didn't feel comfortable reading them directly on camera. We're going to play that for you now. First, you're going to hear one of the actual voicemail messages that uh, Teo received, and then you'll hear Tuyasa Sopo reading them behind the screen in a woman's voice. Hey, babe, I'm just calling to say goodnight. I love you. I know that you're probably doing homework or you're with the boys or grabbing me. What a fatty. But I just want to say I love you and good night, and I'll be okay tonight. My best. Um, yeah, so... Get your rest, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. I love you so much, friend. Sweet dreams. Hey, babe. Um, I'm just calling to say goodnight, and I love you. I know that you're probably doing homework, or with the boys, or grubbing. <laughs> what a fatty. But I just wanted to say I love you, and good night, and I'll be okay tonight. I'll do my best. Um, yeah, so get your rest, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. I love you so much, hun. Sweet dreams. You can decide the voice is the same. Dr. Phil wasn't convinced, so he had Tuyasa Sopo read the voicemail from home on a phone provided by a producer who also watched him make the call. Listen. Hey, babe. I'm just calling to say goodnight. I love you. I know that you're probably doing homework or with the boys. Or no, <laughs> I just want to say I love you and goodnight, and I'll be okay. Um, I'll be okay tonight. I'll do my best. Um, yeah. I gotta say, to me, it sounded like the same voice. Dr. Phil said that the three voice analysts who voice analysts who heard the last recording said that Tuya Sosopo's voice matched the one in the original voicemails. Again, you can judge for yourself. From Anti Teo's perspective, the interview backed up his story. Tuya Sosopo told Dr. Phil that Teo was not part of the hoax in any way other than being just duped by it. Tim Burke broke the story at Deadspin. He joins me now. Tim, I gotta say, I mean, I was kind of fascinated by this interview, uh, and I did not believe that this guy, Renaya, could, could actually do a woman's voice passively for so long on the phone, but then when you hear it, to me, it sounded identical. What do you think? Evening, Anderson. Well, you know, kudos to Dr. Phil for, you know, his magisterial use of the television medium and building this specter of doubt for days that Ronaya either couldn't or wouldn't do the voice that we heard on those voicemails that were provided by Manti Teo, only to spring it on us at the end that, wow, amazingly, he actually could. Uh, whether it really is the same voice that you hear is sort of up for debate. Dr. Phil's analysts say yes, but if you listen, you might hear some things that are significantly different in them. You broke the story. You were skeptical of Teo. Now, now you've seen this interview. You've heard Ryan do the voice. I mean, do you believe that Teo was not involved in the original hoax? 
Uh, I certainly think that if you buy even half of uh, is is telling, and and that requires a, a leap of faith, frankly, given how long that he's been telling these lies and executing this hoax. Uh, you, you sort of have to assume that Manti Teo, his involvement was was minimal insofar as at least. Ronaya says that it was Manti who initiated the conversation by adding the Lene Kakua character on Facebook. Other than that, it's really tough to say that, that, that Manti had any sort of active involvement. Uh, but that, again, requires you to believe both. You know, you have to believe two people who have both admitted to lying. What, what surprised you most about the interview? Well, certainly the, the, the fact that Ronaya claims that Manti Teo dumped Lene Kakua and actually told her that he didn't ever want to talk to her again, and that's what sparked uh, Ronaya Tuiasasopo to kill off the character, and, and that they I'm had a conversation that. about this hours before she allegedly died. That throws a lot of doubt on Manti Teo's version of things, especially if you want to believe that you know he was saying that she was the love of his life, etc., you know, hours after he dumped her, or that a reasonable person could have a normal conversation with someone and then believe that they were sick enough to die of leukemia hours later. All of those things are, are kind of surprising to me, but really intriguing at the same time. Yeah, I mean, it certainly does seem like Manti Teo played up his relationship or his feelings for this person uh, in, in the media for, for, I guess, for his own benefit. I want to play benefit. I want to play a clip of Renaya Tuiasasopo apologizing to Manti Teo today. Let's listen. I can never express how sorry I am for everything. I know I put you through a lot. I'm just very sorry for everything, not just affecting you and hurting you, but hurting your family. I know the depth of the pain that I caused, and I pray that you can forgive me. He, he obviously seems to be a very confused uh, person about his sexuality and a whole bunch of things. Do you think now this is done? I mean, I, as as far as I'm concerned, it seems pretty done, but I'm wondering, you, you broke this story, you know it better than anyone. Well, the first night that we talked, Anderson, that Wednesday night, I said that as soon as these statements started coming out, our chance at really truly finding the facts and the truth were slipping away. I think that we've come to the end of what both Manti Teo and Ronaya Tuiasasopo are going to say what happened, and I doubt that we're going to get many more facts out of it because of that. Uh, his little apology on camera, I mean, that's, that's some more television magic, right? We know that Ronaya already apologized in person, or at least on the television telephone to Manti Teo, so he didn't really need another sort of on-camera apology except to anybody in his family or anybody else that he hadn't been able to sort of explain his role in this hoax. Yeah. Uh, hey, Tim Burke, thank you again. Uh, you know, it's a long, sad, bizarre story. I appreciate you being on. Thanks, Tim.